The material that I use is called Caviar Wrinkleys, and I just, it's 100% cotton, and I usually buy them in the bulk. In this lesson, I'm using this free clip art that I got from the internet and I used it to create my patch. I just clicked save as and I saved it to my desktop and then um, I put it on my thumb drive and I took it to Office Depot and got two transparencies made black on clear which I will show you right now. So here's the transparency I got printed out at Office Depot. I got two of them printed out and I taped them together and as you can see I cut around it to make use of all the space on my screen. I used about five or six designs on the same screen just to utilize the whole, all the space on the screen. That's how I get the most for my money when it comes to a screen. This is the kind of light that I use to burn my transparencies into my screen. Basically it's just a flood light fixture you can get from any hardware store. The type of bulb I use to burn my screen is a 150 watt incandescent light, which you can also buy at any hardware store. But your lamp is gonna be have to be about a foot over your screen. Um, in this book, there's a great chart to refer to if you don't have an exactly 150 watt bulb and you decide to use a 250 watt, watt bulb. Here's a good chart to reference the time that you have to use to burn your screen. I started silk screening a couple years ago. I always wanted to silk screen. Back in the day when I was younger, I learned about it going to punk shows. I really didn't find my flow of art until I discovered how to silk screen and then it all started coming together. My prints, my designs. I do a lot of tribal animal designs. My silk screen studio is in the same room that I live in. So basically the space is tight and I'm gonna show you how to use a tight space and print nice prints on patches. So let's get started. So this is preparing the photo emulsion. You're going to add this sensitizer to the photo emulsion to activate it. First you open up your photo emulsion. It'll be a light blue. Then you fill the sensitizer bottle with three-fourths cold water. There's a little bit of sensitizer in there, so if you think it's empty, it's not. Just go ahead and fill it up cold water and shake it real good. Then you're going to add it to your emulsion. And just throw out the bottle. Then you want to get a paint paddle or a paint stick what I'm using there is a ruler and you just want to mix it up until it's about smooth green. Um, it's pretty thick so it might take a couple minutes to mix it up but you want to mix it really good because you want to get those chemicals to mix together because that's the photo emulsion is what you're going to use to burn your image into your screen and make a stencil. So it doesn't take too long to mix it up. As you can see there, it's just about done. Place the cap on it. And then you just wash off your tools that you were using to mix it. Here we have a blank screen. And that's the photo emulsion. That's an old batch I mixed up. It's a little chunky. When you got older, an older batch of photo emulsion, it can get little chunks in it. But it doesn't really affect the performance of the photo emulsion. You can kind of just pick them out or if it does go into your screen, it will still, the image will still burn through it and you'll still be able to wash it out. Just try to 
get as much of the chunk off as you can if you're using old um an old batch of photo emulsion so basically here I'm just making a very thin layer of the photo emulsion and you you don't want too much excess photo emulsion on the screen because when it dries it'll have pox which are really thick areas where the photo emulsion is and it's almost like plastic when it dries so you won't be able to burn through those so when you set it up to set it up to dry you want to make sure that there's no photo emulsion dripping off of it whatsoever because then you'll get those dried up pox on your screen which you don't want to have so I just kind of brush the excess photo emulsion back into the jar as I do the process then it's done when it's done you want to set your screen in a cool dark place raised up so I have an old desk with the towel in front of it and that's where I dry my screens raised up on old ink jars you want a soft bristle nylon scrub brush to clean your stuff and your screens and you want to if possible you want to store your photo emulsion in a refrigerator because it makes it makes it last longer I recommend storing it in your fridge if you if possible so when you're setting up to burn your screen it's good to have a piece of glass that's cut so that it'll fit inside the frame of your screen I use a black background which everybody should use a black background and uh, I use an old t-shirt you want you want to make sure your screen is 100% dry and that all your images are taped together and lined up right. You want to make sure if there's words on it that the words are legible from the top of the screen from your point of view. If you're looking at your screen, you want to be able to read your words correctly. Now, for the piece of glass, you want to get a piece of glass from your local hardware store. All hardware stores sell glass they'll do the cut for you and I think my piece of glass was like seven bucks and uh, you just want to get it cut about maybe an inch half inch smaller than the inside of the wooden frame so that you can set it inside on top of your images now this chart will explain to you how much time you need to burn your screen considering the screen size and the wattage of your bulb so you turn your light off pull up the glass pull off your designs and you'll see a light green area this is the area which you're gonna spray out with your forceful spray from a sink hose but you want it body temperature you're gonna spray that's the yellowish areas are where you're gonna spray it out at so I have a sink with a spray attachment and that's what I use works pretty good I just spray out all the emulsion out of the yellow areas and basically what you're creating is a stencil when you're doing this it can take a while I suggest when you are creating your designs to use thick lines because I've created designs with thin lines and the thinner the line the harder it is to spray out of your screen for some reason so when you're creating your design you want nice thick dark lines when you're creating your design your image is got to be black to be able to burn it into the screen I'll hold the screen up to the light 
to try to see if there's any emulsion still stuck in the design somewhere. And when it's done, you just let your screen dry. So I just set it somewhere for a while and just let it dry. Next step, you want to cut your fabric for the patches. I use uh, this stuff called Wrinklies. I get my um, fabric from Joann's, which I usually get a coupon and save a couple bucks. You get more for your money when you use coupons at fabric stores. So I cut all my squares up from my patches and I get them ready. I use, you can use whatever, um, usually people use painter's tape to paint off, the, to tape off their screens, but I found a cheaper way and I use packing tape because it's cheaper and basically you're just using it to block off any kind of holes or any kind of places where the ink might come through. So if you're doing um, if you're doing a t-shirt design, you're going to want to tape the borders of the screen. I have a board that has a rubber plastic sheet on it for my background for when I'm printing. It comes in very handy. I suggest using a piece of wood with a smooth surface if you don't have the plastic. I hit it with the lint roller. Make sure there's no lint or hair or anything on it. Then I, you try to center it the best you can. You lay your screen down. Sometimes it can be difficult to get it in right where you want it in the center without having a actual printing press. These are two different kinds of ink that I use. They're both water-based though, but I recommend using as many kind of different inks as you can you can because you never know what's going to work best for your setup. First you do the flood stroke, then you do the print stroke. Basically, you just flood the screen with the ink and then you're pushing it right onto the fabric with the print stroke. And there you go, there's a the patch. I'm going to do it again. You apply the ink above the design or to the side of the design on your screen. And you place it. You try to center it the best you can on your fabric. Then you do a, a flood stroke. Then a print stroke. Pull your screen up. Pull your patch or t-shirt or hold it down so it doesn't. Uh, wrinkle and get all messed up and then boom you got a patch so cleanups pretty easy with water-based ink you just can clean it off right in the sink it's non-toxic um, you just need the soft bristle nylon scrub brush does a great job. Couple bucks. That's it. Just set them up. Set them off to dry. Off to the side. You pull off your tape. Throw it in the trash. I have an outside wash station with some bamboo and rocks, and I just spray that screen right off. Right in my backyard. You want to flip the screen both sides. Sometimes I hit it with the brush. Sometimes I don't have to. Once your patch has dried and the ink has dried on your patch, you need to set it with the iron. 
So you turn your iron up to as hot as it can go. Don't use water. Lay an old t-shirt down over top of the patch or t-shirt and you just iron it and that will set your ink in and make it permanent. Some people use a flash dryer. If you have the money, that's great. But if you just have an iron, that'll work too. So please visit my shop, Mystical Merchant Hut, on Etsy. We, do, we have great stuff, patches, tie-dyes, all kinds of cool stuff. And um, see you next time.